So how do you turn an IBC tote into a storage tank for sap for making maple syrup? Well, stick around. Today we're going to find out. Well, howdy guys. Welcome back to b and Farms, where our goal is to work in cooperation with our land and not just live on it. You know, we are back at the uh, sugar house, our maple syrup sugar house today. And we're making some improvements in the room that holds our sap tanks, where the sap from the woods, you know, comes into the building here. Uh, we had a 210 gallon tank in here for, you know, up until last year. And there were a couple of white knuckle days running home from work, guys, when you're like, man, I hope that thing doesn't overflow. You know, if you're, if you're at work and the weather's perfect and you're looking at it and you think, man, I bet the sap is running today. Well, you know what I'm talking about. You know, man, am I going to get home and find a mess on the floor? So we decided that, you know, that's enough of that. We need to put some bigger sap storage tanks in. Now, we wanted stainless steel tanks. You know, everybody does. Uh, they are not in our budget. So we have decided to go with, yep, you guessed it, the ubiquitous IBC tote. We've got two of them back here behind me. Each one is 275 gallons. And I'm going to show you how we have these plumbed up and how we've got them set up for the upcoming maple syrup season. So let me turn you around here and we'll take a look. All right, there they are, uh, two 275 gallon tanks like we were talking about. We'll start at the top. You can see that we have cut the top out of these tanks. Uh, they come with, I think it's an eight inch diameter screw on lid in the center. Uh, it's really hard to clean them out with that, you know, with that lid in there. So this way with an open top, we can get a, a brush or a broom and get down in there and, and slosh some water in it and wash these tanks out and uh, won't be any problem. So that's important to keep your sap tanks clean. Bacteria builds up in them and that will spoil your sap that much quicker. So this open top will let us do that. Okay, you seen the top of it? Let's move down to the bottom and I'll show you what we got down here. You know, there's a lot of different hookups or thread size where IBC totes are concerned. Let me show you what we've got. This particular one is a two inch pipe thread coming out of the bottom of the tank. You can see it's got a shut off valve integral made into it. Um, the other one is exactly identical to it. Two inch pipe thread, red, you know, red handle shut off valve. Now, I don't think that these valves are gonna hold up. I think that these tanks are meant to be basically a one-time use. So I don't look for these valves to last. If they don't, we'll put valves, you know, in the PVC and, and let that go, but uh, we'll use these as long as we can. So coming out of that, we have used some two inch unions. Uh, these are threaded unions, screw right on the, the male thread coming out of the tank. We've got it into a T, runs over another T, and this has a three quarter inch, you know, adapter or pipe thread here on the bottom. This is where we will pull out our sap that will run to the reverse osmosis. We added a cap to the end of it just so we could, you know, take it off and clean it. So we'll move on down. Same thing right here, T, the difference is, this does not have any type of fitting in it to pull for the RO. So both of these tanks are plumbed together. We draw off in one spot, right down here, you know, where that RO is gonna hook up. We've also added an inline shutoff valve right there. This is to wash the tank. We can shut this off when we're collecting sap, you know, and fill the tanks. Uh, when we wanna wash them, we'll open this valve uh, swab the tanks out and of course all of the the wash water will run right outside the building and we'll discharge it that way something i need to add uh, is probably some support underneath both of these so that the weight of the sap is not you know pulling down on that fitting coming out of the tank because this fitting is integral to the bladder in this tank if it gets destroyed you know you're you're in bad shape you can't just unscrew it and put another one on that's that's part of the tank All right, I've showed you how we're going to get sap out of the tank and how we're going to wash the tank and discharge it. How are we going to get sap into the tank? Let's move up to the top side and we'll take a look. All right, guys, here is the incoming sap that coming from the woods, or actually this comes from our pump shed down at the bottom of the hill where we have our vacuum releaser and our vacuum pump. I'll put a link to that video where we constructed that and show it in operation uh, at the end of this video. If you're interested in building your own vacuum releaser and your own vacuum pump setup, 
and show you how it's done or how we did it. It really made a difference in how we collect sap and uh, it works out real well. So check that out. All right, we've got a union so we can take the pipe apart and clean it if we need to. It travels on down the top of the first tank. There's a motorized ball valve. On over to the top of the second tank, another motorized ball valve and a stainless steel float and a float switch. All right, why is it so complicated? Why the motorized ball valves and the float? Why can't you just dump sap into both tanks? Well, you can, and it would be you know, a lot simpler that way. And some of you guys are probably noticing or, or thinking about that pipe down there that we, we drain the sap from or we flush the tanks with, and you're thinking like, well, if that connects both tanks, if you just dump into one tank, the level's going to come up even in both tanks. And you're right, it will. The problem is on those days when we don't have a big sap run, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to, I don't want to use the word contaminate. We don't want sap in both tanks because we have to clean them every time. So if we can just add sap to one tank at a time and we have a, a small sap run, we don't dirty the other tank. So that works in our favor. So that's why we have the ball valves and the float. All right, back to it. All right, if you don't want to put in the ball valves, you know, and complicate this, like with the float and the float switch and everything, you could just take and drill a hole down in this, in this tote, do a corresponding hole in this tote, and you could add what they call bulkhead fittings or, you know, uniseals, put a piece of PVC pipe between these two, and then as the level rose in one tank, if it got high enough where you had to add a separate tank, it would automatically transfer through that pipe and start filling this tank. Simple is good, right? And it usually is. But sometimes I just have the need to, I don't want to say overcomplicate, but put my own spin on it. Uh, I like to build stuff. So that's why we did it this way. You see that green light on this valve? That's telling me that this valve is closed. So when incoming sap comes in, it's not going to be able to get past this valve. So it's going to run right on over. You know, that light's not on. This valve is open. It's going to start dumping into this tank. When the sap level rises and catches this float, makes it float. Hear that? These valves are cycling. This tank is full. We're going to switch and run to the other tank. There. See that green light come on there? That means this valve is closed. And now that valve is open. So when this tank gets full, it automatically switches and starts filling the second tank. There, you can see this light light up that says this valve is open. Very simple. A quick word about these ball valves. Man, they make these things in a lot of different configurations. The ones we're using here are normally open, meaning the valve, you know, when it has no power to it, it's open and, and sap can flow through it. Uh, when we put power to it, the valve shuts. Now, if there's a power failure, both of these valves will default to the open position. So we don't have to worry about the tank, you know, one tank overflowing and it not able to switch to the next one because they're both going to open in a power failure situation and you're just going to fill both tanks simultaneously. So when you order your ball valves, there are two wire, three wire, five wire, and it depends, you know, even within that, there are variations within them. You can have two wires where you switch polarity to either open or close the valve. You can have a capacitor that does one function for you, either normally open or normally closed. That's what we have here. We have a capacitor in these valves that holds them normally open, and we put power to it to close it. Uh, the five wires or three wires, you can, you, can, you can get a valve that, you know, you can switch back and forth between it. Five wires just have some extra indicator lights on it. So, you know, pay attention when you order your valves. They're, it's real easy to get the wrong one. Back to the tank. You know, obviously you're going to want a food grade tank. You know, these, you don't want to, you don't want to put maple sap in a tank that held, you know, motor oil in its, in its former life. You can see that these, what these had in them, cane syrup. That's pretty good for maple sap, right? Cane syrup, not high fructose corn syrup, cane syrup. We've washed them out real well. We'll wash them out again, you know, because they're sitting here open tops. 
there's going to be a spider drop down in there or, or just a piece of sawdust or something. So we'll wash them out again before it comes time to make syrup. But, uh, you know, you, I, I have no worries about what these tanks held in their former life. So pay attention to that, too. Quick note about this cross beam. When you buy these, of course, obviously they have a, you know, a top on them with that eight inch lid we talked about. And there are two of these cross beams in each IBC tote and they hold the bladder down in. So you just, they just unbolt, we lift them out, saws all the uh, top off, and then we put these back in here to support this PVC pipe. Uh, these little brackets are actually meant for PEX, one inch PEX, but they fit three quarter inch PVC really nicely. And I made some standoffs out of some CPVC just to raise the pipe up to the, you know, the height that I wanted. Probably we'll end up adding an elbow into these, into these ball valves and kind of direct the flow away from the float so it's not, you know, splashing down the float all the time. But that's something we can do later, no problem. Someone's probably going to ask me about this box over here on the wall. I better talk about that. This was the controller for our previous maple sap collection system. We ran SureFlow wet pumps, uh, 12 volt pumps and this controller is what turned them on and off whew, turned them on and off depending on the temperature outside so it monitored all that and, and controlled that that pumping system we did away with that this year and uh, going to switch everything to the vacuum releaser down at the bottom of the hill that we already talked about so rather than move that you can see it's in a really bad place back behind this IBC tote I really need to move it you know over this wall over here but in the meantime we're using that as our 12 volt power supply to operate our ball valves. These ball valves operate anywhere from nine to 36 volts, AC or DC. We already got that power supply sitting right there. So yeah, we're gonna use it. So there you have it guys, how we set up our IBC totes to collect maple sap. You know, we got a lot of folks using these, real popular in the maple industry. Just take note of what they're, you know, what they held before and, and set up a system that works for you. This is our first year using these in theory, I don't see why it won't work. I have high hopes for it, but uh, you know, we'll find out. Well, that's gonna wrap this video up. We're gonna start making a few more, you know, as we get closer to the maple syrup season. It's still a long way away, but we've got a lot of work to do to get ready for it. We've made some changes. We're putting more trees on our homemade vacuum releaser, so we should be collecting more sap, hence the need for bigger tanks. And we will showcase some of that as the season goes on or as the, the prep season goes on. We'll show you how we're, you know, we're getting ready for it and what we're doing to, to automate the process and use some large scale technology for a small scale operation. Guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about us. Get outside, it's good for you. You know how it is, it's beautiful. Get outside and enjoy this pre-fall weather. Be nice to one another, it's a crazy world. We could use a lot more of that out there. Guys, I'll see you on the next video.